Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. And today's topic is the endless infinity war between machines and free weights, which ones grow muscle best. And I'm here to put a complete stop end to this war. I'm that hippie girl running out in front of the tank going, stop fighting everybody. Maybe I'm cooler than that by analogy. In any case, machines versus free weights for getting jacked is a false controversy. It doesn't actually exist. Whoa, inception. Let's talk about why that is. The framing of the question of, are machines or free weights better for gains is already wrong. It is similar to asking at a normal average job, should we hire men or women for this position? What? Shouldn't we be hiring whoever is most qualified for the job? Oh yeah, that's right, Econ 101. So in the same sense, if you have to ask machines or free weights for muscle growth, you're asking the wrong question altogether. The real question is, which exercises can I choose, and I don't care what kind of exercises they are, that will best grow my muscles? Now that's the real question. So we'll spend the rest of this talk answering that question, because that's an important question to ask. Here's the thing. The way we get down to selecting the exercises that are best for getting inject for a specific muscle group is with a series of filters. We start out with every exercise literally just straight up known to man to exist inside of a gymnasium. And we apply one by one the seven, seven training principles. And if you want to know what they are, well, here they are. But if you really want to dig into them, our book, The Scientific Principles of Hypertrophy Training, has all of them in there described and beat to death over 200 whatever odd pages. Each training principle is applied to this set of exercises. And every time we apply the training principle, it knocks a bunch of the exercises off as nope, 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 and only a smaller fraction remain. Then we apply the next training principle and it knocks out a bunch that don't meet the muster and the circle of exercises gets smaller and smaller and smaller until we have just a few exercises which are our best and then we can use those. So here are the training principles. Let's go through an example to see how this would work. And if you really want to be able to do this yourself super quick, like I'll do it here, scientific principles of hypertrophy training, uh, the link to buy stuff is in the description. It costs money. But on the other hand, my butlers need to be paid every month. They insist on the money. But you guys get to work for me, I say, this is if I said nothing at all. They still hold out. They, I, I pay them in tips only because it's how you pay butlers. Um, so it's a lot of tax receipts for tips. In any case, I digress. Here we go. First training principle, the most important and the most inclusive, is specificity. So if you are trying to get an exercise that builds your chest, bulky pecs, yum. All non-chest exercises are gone. Because you have squats, leg presses, curls, bench press, incline, dips, they stay. Everything else goes away. Well, that makes it pretty easy. So now we're just down to exercises that actually hit the chest. Awesome. Next, we apply the filter of the overload principle. Everything that doesn't quite give us a very good overload is gone. So that one, like, you hang off a bench and you just do, like, the cable thing with one arm and it barely feel anything, nothing's happening, that's gone, not overloading enough. You need exercises that have a high raw stimulus magnitude. Ugh, I said raw weird. I said it like a New Yorker. Raw. Hey, Scott, the video guy, you ever been raw before with someone? You just tell them what you feel? Yeah. Oh, God. I should have never asked that shit. He's probably raw right now. <laughs> Sick. In any case, raw stimulus magnitude is basically some way to figure out how much does an exercise really stimulate muscle growth. If it gives you an amazing pump without uh, doing a trillion sets, if you can feel the tension ripping your pecs apart, if higher reps give you a psychotic burn right in the chest, if you're sore for days after just doing a few sets, that's a good sign. 
Because there's some exercises you do and you're like, I don't know what that, I guess I know this technically trains my chest, but it sucks. So you take about top 10 of chest exercises. You see, these are the, the top 10 that really fuck me up. Great. Our list is just now down to about 10 exercises. Then we rank them again on fatigue management, which is to say we pick the exercises that have the best stimulus to fatigue ratio. So all the exercises that work best, shit, fuck 10, let's say 20 or 30 of the best exercises because there's, Jesus Christ, there's an infinite number of chest exercises. Which of those give you the least systemic fatigue, like beat you up a shitload to where like, fuck, I don't want to do this anymore. Arched benching, super heavy powerlifter style can really beat that ass a little too much so that you're like still sore in your lower back for squats the next day, uh, right? Maybe that's not the best exercise. Stimulus to fatigue ratio style. Exercises that are just don't suck the soul out of you as much and specifically exercises that are friendly towards your joints or friendlier towards your joints. So if you have some kind of incline barbell bench thing you do that you just tears your shoulders asunder, like fuck that. But if you have a, a dumbbell press that you're like, oh, this actually feels great, it ranks above. So now exercises that are on the, let's say, bottom third of SFR, they just not going to use them. So yeah, they're super stimulative, but they beat us up too much. So no thanks. So now we got maybe 15 exercises or so that are still in the running. Now we started with like thousands. We're down to 15. Not bad and just a couple training principles, but wait, there's more. Next is SRA, stimulus recovery adaptation. All one principle. It's the idea that you train, rest, recover, and repeat. That's all the principle says. You got to train and then wait till shit happens that you actually started in training, like muscle actually grows, blah, blah, blah. And then when you recover, you hit it again. So there's a selection there in the context of your program. Let's say you're, you have a Monday, Wednesday, Friday chest routine. Friday, you can pick some movements that take a while to heal because you have two days of rest. But on Monday and Wednesday, you might want to be like, oh man, I want that fucking the super deep fly, dumbbell fly that really rips my pecs open. But shit, if I do that on Mondays with any kind of volume that's decent, I won't heal by Wednesday and I won't heal by Friday. So I'm going to save the flies for Friday. But right now I'm picking Monday exercises, flies are out, cambered bar benches out, and everything stays in. Those just really, really fuck me up. So the jump is not going to heal on time. Or like this exercise is great for my pecs, but I got triceps the next day and it hits my tries too much or it hits my shoulder joint too much and I'd love to recover for tomorrow. So no thanks. So some of this is a sequencing issue. So you had like, you know, 12 exercises. Now you're maybe down to like 10 or something like that. Next up is variation. Variation cuts out two exercises for us or two groups of exercise. One exercises we just did recently that were super stale with. Because somebody else could look at this list for you, they make it and you'll be like, okay, uh, ooh, incline dumbbell press, yes? And you're like, ah, no, I just did it for like three months and I'm just like fucking tired of the shit. Like, okay, that goes. And then exercises you're thinking of saving for a, a, a very, a mesocycle like the next meso or the next two mesos ahead. Let's say you're planning out a fat loss phase and the last mesocycle of that fat loss phase, you really want to do deficit push-ups because they really pump up your pecs like crazy. They take very little setup. You're super tired from your diet and you just, it's a huge stimulus and you just love it. You're just like, damn it. The way I look, I love taking pictures at the end of my fat loss phase. Deficit push-ups have to be in. So that if it's phase one of three fat loss phases, or sorry, the first month of the fat loss phase, then you're going to be like, ooh, deficit push-ups? Ah, fuck. I don't want to get stale on them by then. I'm going to save them for the last month. So that one goes as well. That constrains your list even a little bit more. Exercises that are already stale or exercises you want to save for a little bit later. Next is phase potentiation. This is very advanced. You can just skip this one if you're like, what the fuck? But very, very nitty gritty. As you go through the training phases, let's say you just did an active rest phase. Your muscles are super, super ready to be trained and they're super sensitive to growth and they're sensitive to damage. It's totally fine to pick an exercise that doesn't have a lot of eccentric loading, like a, like a kind of a, a rusty machine, and it doesn't have a huge amount of tension at the stretch. It's one of those, like at the bottom, you don't feel a ton, but at the top, it gets a little harder. That exercise is totally fine for you to pick right after your active rest phase because you're super sensitive to growth anyway. It'll for sure hit your chest good enough. But that same exercise mesocycle three of your training phase, two mesocycles in, you might have to do like eight sets to feel anything. And by then your elbows are off of your body. Whereas exercises that are super eccentrically demanding and ones which have exposed you to a really big, deep stretch, they're the ones that are 
super effective in Mezzo 1, but so effective you might have to do like a set of that exercise to start with. Like, that's kind of stupid. I'm doing a set of camber bar bench in Mezzo 1, and I'm doing eight sets of machine press in Mezzo 3 to get the same effect, the fuck? Like, why don't I just flip them shits over, do three or four sets of that not so great machine, but good enough, because I'm not super uh, trained yet to need that sort of thing. Like, I'm just good enough for me now. I'm really detrained after the active rest phase. It's good enough now. And then later, when you're, you know, tail end of whatever phase you're doing, a couple of cycles in, you're like, all right, now I'm more resistant to hypertrophy. Now I need the big guns. Then you do the camber bar bench press, which is super eccentric control, ultra deep stretch. It fucks you up, but you're already pretty well trained. So it's not overboard. You don't just do one set and go home because otherwise you get too sore. Three or four sets. There's a symmetry there. It's really awesome. These exercises, obviously you'll have to move them around to get them to the right place phase potentiation wise, which means in any given phase, some of them are like, oh, I'm going to save you for later. And this one, I'm not quite ready. And this one, perfect. All right. So our list curtails again. Here we go. Let me tell you guys about the RP Hypertrophy app. With over 28 preset programs already in the app, you can choose to make your own, you can modify an existing program, or you can just run the programs exactly as they were written by me personally. This app programs everything for you. Exercises, weights, sets, reps, frequency, the whole thing. After every single workout on every single week, the app adjusts to your unique parameters with every single input. We have over 250 exercises in the app with detailed video tutorial links to every single one. You never have to be confused about technique or form ever again. I'm guessing right now you're pretty interested in the app? Download the RP Hypertrophy app today. After the six training principles you just applied, you may be down to like three to five exercises remaining all of them at roughly equal on stimulus to fatigue ratio, so they're all fucking great. All of them are up to the task. All you have to do is just pick your favorite, whichever one you want, or flip a coin that has three sides and go. And that's all you ever need to do about picking exercises. What about machines versus free weights? Who gives a shit? Comments, questions below, like, subscribe, consider our members area. It's got really fun videos in it. It's just more lecture science stuff. But uh, we're not uh, OnlyFans quite yet, but maybe. And last question for you, should I start an OnlyFans? And then if I should, what should I put in there? It's feed, isn't it? You sick fucks. I'll see you next time.